In this video, we'll start talking about the maintenance of equipment, that is your routine equipment use. One of the key factors that you need to understand when you're talking about routine equipment use is equipment calibrations. So in this video, we will look at equipment calibrations. All equipment in a laboratory, new and existing, need to be calibrated, maintained and validated on a regular basis to ensure accurate and reliable functioning. Let's examine the details of calibration. Equipment calibration can be defined as a process of verification by comparing the accuracy of a measuring or a test instrument against a reference standard. We would like to mention here that there is calibrations are required both for equipment and for your analytes that you are using in the equipment. So how does that work? Equipments need some kind of a coarse tuning. If you remember, there's a coarse tuning which is your adjustment of your equipment and some fine tuning are done for the analytes using some material called calibrators. Both these concepts are important though in this video we will only talk about the equipment calibrations. When you are looking at this picture, let's assume that the reference standard is the white dialed watch. So comparing to the white dialed watch, you see that the black dialed watch is about 4 minutes slower. Therefore you look at one equipment which we have to consider as a standard and adjust the other equipment against that standard. Such a process is known as calibration. I hope that is clear. It is putting it too simplistically. You are looking at one equipment which is considered as a standard and you are adjusting the other using the reference. So calibration needs to be performed for both analytes. In this section, we are only talking about equipment calibration. I just I said that a minute ago. You need to know that your standard is correct. It's an important thing. You just decided in the earlier slide that the white dialed watch is correct. In the above example, we just decided like that. But how do you know that? How do you know how correct that is and what errors that could be having? Such concepts are included in the calibration process. Thus, the comparison of accuracy should be defined within limits of uncertainties. We will talk about these concepts in detail uh, in the later parts of this video. Thus, the aim of any calibration process is to detect, correlate and if possible eliminate by adjustment any discrepancy in the accuracy of the test equipment being calibrated. I hope that is clear. As components age and equipment undergoes changes due to variation in the environmental temperature and humidity or sustains mechanical stress, the performance gradually degrades. This is called a drift. When this happens, test results become unreliable and the quality of the results suffer. Any parameter of an instrument that will affect the quality of the test result has to be calibrated. Example in the case of a refrigerated centrifuge, the parameters to be verified are speed, time and temperature. I hope you have understood that concept. Anything, any parameter any aspect of an instrument which will affect the quality will require periodic verification for accuracy. This process is called calibration. Certain basic elements to be addressed as part of calibration are, first one is the calibration interval. How often do you calibrate? The period of time between successive scheduled calibrations. This depends upon the usage rates, conditions of use, skill level of the personnel using the equipment, degree of accuracy expected as per your laboratory requirements and the manufacturer's recommendations. You can get some idea of what the frequencies of calibration are if you refer to NABL 112. It's a free download document. It's a document of NABL which is an accrediting agency of, for laboratories and have specified certain durations when calibrations are warranted. But then the final decision if you want to calibrate more often is yours if you feel that your equipment is being used excessively and requires verification on a more frequent basis it's entirely up to you to do that and now we come to two important concepts with regard to calibration we have already mentioned these briefly in the early conversation and these are measurement traceability and measurement uncertainty these are new concepts and we will explain this to you further in the next slides First, we will take up measurement or meteorological traceability. 
This is the most important concept in calibration. Calibration must be designed and operated to ensure that measurements made by the laboratory are directly traceable to national and international standards of measurement through an unbroken chain of accredited calibrating laboratory. That sounds like a lot of information, so we'll break it down for you and see in the next slides how and why we have to do this. Very important to establish traceability to an international system of unit or the SI unit for calibrations. When a valid traceability chain to the SI unit is established, it ensures that the working device is properly calibrated and if correctly used will produce valid results. Look at this pyramid here. At the top you can see what is said as an SI unit which is a legal unit. I will come back to this in a minute. The second and the third layers you see are primary standards, secondary standards. Moving further down you see reference standards. Further down, you see working standards and finally you see at the base of the pyramid, the test and the measuring instruments. The legal unit or the SI unit, which is the most accurate measure for volume, weight, length, temperature or whatever you are measuring. That is your, the final accurate unit. That is the ultimate absolute unit of measurement in the case of whatever is being measured. However, it is not possible for all laboratories in the world to compare their measurement with the legal units, is it? It's practically impossible that every lab can measure their accuracy against the ultimate legal unit or the SI unit as shown at the top of the pyramid. And so, there are primary and secondary standards which are made by comparing with the SI units and these are available in every country with certain organizations in India. The reference material custodian is the NPL or the National Physical Laboratory. So now you see that an unbroken chain between the SI unit and the primary and secondary standard is being established. But then again, in a country like India, there will be so many laboratories. So is it possible for everybody to compare with the primary or the secondary standards? Possibly not. So there are further links in the chain which are made as reference standards, working standards, etc. You will see this one when you look at the picture. Therefore, it is important that an unbroken chain of comparisons is developed as far as practical, keeping in mind the degree of uncertainty of measurement that increases as the chain goes down. The degree of uncertainty must be mentioned on any calibrator or calibration certificate, depending on which the laboratory can decide the acceptability. This unbroken chain of comparisons is called the traceability. I hope that concept is clear. Going back to the picture, you see that the chain of comparisons starting from the SI, primary standards, going to the secondary standards, through reference standards and working standards to the measuring instruments. If you look at the right side, you see this arrow going up, which is the traceability of the material or mechanism that you are using for your comparison. And if you look at the arrow that's coming down here, that is the dissemination of the standard. So, uh, the traceability goes upwards, dissemination comes downwards. If you look at the left side, there's another arrow coming down and that is your degree of uncertainty. And you can see that the, as the dissemination of the standard comes down, the degree of uncertainty increases. If the uncertainty is very small at the initial phase, the uncertainty increases to a much more substantial amount of degree as it reaches the testing or the measuring instruments. However, there are limits to the degree of uncertainty which is acceptable and that's what I said about the uncertainty must be mentioned on any calibrator and you can decide if this calibrator is okay for your laboratory. In India, the traceability of NPL and is evidenced by the certificate of accreditation to ISO 17025 and we'll talk about this again in later sections. The reference material you use in your lab or those with which your external agencies calibrate your equipment need to demonstrate this kind of traceability to ISO 17025. That is generally given in your calibration certificate. We'll show you an example later. To reiterate, as you see here, there is a dissemination of material in a traceable way but with a certain level of increasing uncertainty. 
That was just a reiteration of what I said earlier. I hope that concept is fairly clear to you. Once again, since a new concept, I would like to reiterate with another illustration. Traceability is an unbroken chain of comparisons. Look at the links in this chain in which every instrument in the chain is calibrated against a more accurate instrument immediately above it in the chain. Remember the picture from before? Calibration thus is the linking of measurement standards and or, or measuring instruments to relevant national or international standards through an unbroken chain of comparisons. Again to reiterate, national traceability is to the National Meteorology Institute or Laboratory NPL New Delhi and the international to the SI system of units in BIPM France. After traceability, the second concept that requires mention in the case of calibration is the uncertainty of measurement, something that we need to understand in detail. Every measurement is subject to some uncertainty, even the SI units. A certain amount of variability is observed in repeat measurements results even if the measurement system is perfect. This is an inherent characteristic of a repeat measurement. And this can be due to the measuring system, analyte being measured, the environmental factors, the operator variance or other sources. A measurement result is only complete when accompanied by the statement of uncertainty in that measurement. We talked about this earlier also. The measurement result should therefore be specified as x plus or minus u, where x is the best estimate of the measurement and is equal to the average of repeated observations. U is the uncertainty of measurement. The use of good laboratory practices such as traceable calibrations, careful calculation, good record keeping and checking can reduce measurement uncertainties. So I hope the concept of traceability and uncertainty are clear for you now. And so now we have to understand how do you calculate and compute and understand the amount of uncertainty of a calibrator or a calibrating system. And here I want to stop and tell you that we, something that I had said earlier also, there are analyte calibrations as well as equipment calibrations. Let's consider equipment calibration as a kind of coarse tuning of your equipment and your analyte calibration as a further fine tuning of your equipment. Okay, so I'm going to show you a calibrator insert for an analyte calibration. In this case, a hematology calibrator for a cell counting and it's for a cell counter calibrates, which is called the traceability uncertainty of hematology calibrator is the what this product insert is titled. And if you look at this sheet, you will see there are multiple columns here. The first column is your names of your analytes, WBC, RBC, platelets, etc. And you move on to your fourth column, you see your target values. And if you move on to your Next column, for your fifth column, you see the uncertainty of each component. So this is how the product insert comes and this is a very important resource that you understand the uncertainty of each of these components. And if you move down, you see there is a ICSH, which is your traceability. So this kind of a product insert is very important. This is an information sheet or a reference sheet or whatever you would want to call it. And it's a very important resource that you have to document and keep filed. And also along with the expiry date and lot number, all these things will be mentioned on your product insert. And this should be looked through, understood and also filed and all these components should be understood before you embark upon the calibration. If there is an uncertainty which is beyond the acceptability of your laboratory, you can always refuse to use this kind of a calibrator. So second resource that we have here is a calibration certificate. It's another very important piece of documentation in the event of calibration of equipment. After your calibration is done, the agency which is calibrating will issue a calibration certificate with traceability and all details required to understand and evidence your calibration with the details of your uncertainty, your traceability and other very valuable inputs in your certificate. This is a reiteration. The result from calibration or a measuring equipment or measurement standard is given in a calibration certificate or a calibration report. It can be either in a hard copy or an electronic format and should include a minimum of these things, name and address of the calibrating agency, 
unique identification certificate, name and address of the client, the identification of the equipment calibrated and by the manufacturer or the brand and type and the unique identification number, date the calibration was performed, the environmental conditions during calibration, standards used with their validities, calibration uncertainty, traceability. Very important point, whatever standard, so that they are telling you, I'm calibrating your equipment, this is how much uncertainty my standards or my calibrator is having. So that uncertainty and traceability is also stated. And moving on to identification of the method used. Calibration results obtained and units of measurement including a record of the readings obtained during calibration for each of the calibration values and record of the calculation of the accuracy and precision of all sets of values, any use limitations of the equipment calibrated, any correction factor, the uncertainty of measurement of results. This uncertainty here depicts the uncertainty your equipment has. Okay, I hope you are understanding it from the uncertainty that is specified earlier. That was the uncertainty of the standards. And now they are saying after calibrating, this is how much your equipment is having the uncertainty. Coverage factor or confidence limits of each level. Validity of the latest calibration and when the next calibration is due. So, these are the components that generally are given on a calibration certificate. Now, we have the authority under which the certificate is issued. In this case, it is a, there is an NABL symbol since the calibrating agency is NABL accredited. NABL accreditation here means accreditation to the standard 17025 that we have talked about in the earlier discussion. I hope you understand the components that should be checked out on calibration certificates and all these different things at uh, the degree of uncertainty, the traceability and all other things should be verified by the laboratory before accepting the certificate and accepting the equipment back after calibration. And also one thing that we had already talked about is the operating ranges. Suppose your pipette is being uh, used to measure 100 microliter volume. And that is the only requirement you must be having in your laboratory. And so that is where your attention should be. Your pipette may be able to measure up to 1000 microliters, but that is not in your area of operation. But your 100 is very important for you. And that's where you would exactly look to see how much of uncertainty is there at this 100 microliter level. Or suppose you're looking at a thermometer that you're using to measure a fridge temperature which is to be between 2 to 8 degrees or minus 20 or minus 80, whatever it is. But please make sure that when it's getting calibrated, this operational temperatures are calibrated and what is the uncertainty there? That the thermometer may be able to measure up to 100 degrees or 60 or 70 or whatever, but it's not relevant for you. Your fridge thermometer has to measure and be very sure of the uncertainty between 2 to 8 degrees. Similarly, for a water bath, your 37 degrees centigrade is important. So that is how you decide what your operational uh, requirements are and what is uncertainty there. Calibration of equipment can be outsourced. That's another thing that I would like to bring to your attention to an external accredited calibration laboratory or this can be done in-house also. Mostly, generally in India as of now, it is getting outsourced, but it can be done in-house also. We have already talked about the outsourcing of calibration to calibration laboratories. We are mostly talking about minor equipment, ancillary equipment like pipettes and refuges, etc. Calibration of equipment is required for both analytical equipment as well as ancillary equipment. The ancillary equipment like pipettes, centrifuges, etc. can be calibrated in-house or can be outsourced to a third party or a second party agency. We will talk about in-house calibrations in the next slide, but before moving on to that, we need to understand something about the concept of verification of calibration. This is what happens in most analytical equipment like your biochemistry analyzers, etc. A lot of your components like the lamp, cuvette, etc. are checked through the mechanism of just checking it. And because at this point, there are certain calibrations which cannot strictly be made in the SI units, in these cases, the laboratory is required to use some alternative mechanism to establish the traceability to an appropriate measurement standard. And the one material which is very commonly used is the quality control material. Such a process is called calibration verification. So most of the analytical equipment are generally calibrated by the manufacturers where they come from. 
they will do the preventive maintenance after that they verify it using a quality control material some kind of a certified reference material you can read more about this in NABL 142 which is a policy on traceability of measurement results so now we can move on to in house calibration but for minor equipment some of the equipment calibration can be done in house also if calibrations are done in house again the traceability has to be demonstrated and some examples of in house calibration can be a tachometer which is calibrated can be used for calibrating the rotational speed of centrifuges but make sure that the tachometer has a traceable calibration itself the tachometer must be calibrated by a higher degree of laboratory with a higher degree of accuracy which is a 17025 accredited laboratory and should have calibrated that tachometer with which you will further calibrate your centrifuges and that tachometer can be used to calibrate your whatever centrifuge in your laboratory so that unbroken chain of comparisons to the higher level is always evident at any kind of audits i hope that concept is clear so once again to reiterate about calibration of equipment both uh, minor equipment or ancillary equipment and major equipment minor equipment can be outsourced you know, to a third party or any government accredited kind agency who can come in and calibrate your equipment and uh, talking about uh, minor equipment can be done in house also and when you are talking about your major analytical equipment uh, generally the manufacturers themselves do the calibration as required and more importantly here it's a calibration verification which is very important because after you calibrate you run a quality control to make sure that your calibration is correct and uh, if you go back to other examples which can be done in house apart from your uh, centrifuges you can also calibrate digital thermometers which are used to calibrate other thermometers in your laboratory calibrate one digital thermometer then you can calibrate other thermometers using the one which you have calibrated but the degree of uncertainty should always be clearly specified calibrated weights can be used to calibrate pipettes calibrated timers can be used to calibrate other timers of centrifuges these are all possibilities that you can make use of as you think of calibration of ancillary equipment in your laboratory now that we have understood some basic concepts in calibration like traceability and certainty frequency of calibration how we can uh, have calibration of minor equipment and ancillary equipment and major analytical equipment who will do the calibration and how frequently we have to come back to the documentation again documentation of calibration is very very important we already talked about the information sheet for calibrations we talked about certificates and what the certificate should contain that one more document that you would want to keep in for your reference will be and a very useful document it is a calibration matrix i'm giving a picture of a sample calibration matrix here it's a very handy document if you developed a calibration document for both major which is an analytical and minor which is ancillary equipment for a quick reference this will become a ready reckoner this will alert the lab to schedules of calibration and major maintenance and easy way to, is to stick dates on the chart like you are seeing on this one you can use yellow sticky notes or something like that for your schedule calibrations when was it done and when it is due similarly you can use another color for your the major maintenance which is scheduled so that's a very easy way of just an idea it's not like it's a mandatory thing it's just an idea and this should be displayed in a prominent place to alert the relevant functionaries of upcoming need for calibration or maintenance in the case of minor equipment only calibrations need to be displayed because that is how it generally happens any maintenance required should be addressed through manufacturers before calibration is considered i hope this point is clear because for major uh, equipment we are assuming here i am assuming here that the manufacturer is going to do both the schedule maintenance and the calibration so if you display both the dates on one matrix it's easy to manage that way whereas in the case of minor equipment generally the third party agencies will not do your repairs they will only do your calibration so if you have a calibration schedule for all your centrifuges and your microwave pipettes and whichever equipment you have and display it as a it's again a matrix it will alert you to the upcoming requirement for calibrations so at this point what is about the maintenance that we are talking about there will be minor repairs required for all your minor equipment also when a major equipment manufacturer come for the schedule maintenance and calibration whatever is due they will first do a 
maintenance and they will analyze the equipment for their accuracy precision etc and then they do the adjustment and then calibrate but in the case of minor equipment generally the maintenance is not done by the third party agency we already talked about it they only calibrate so if there is any maintenance required suppose a spring of a pipette is not working properly you would want to fix it before you send out for calibration because there's no point calibrating a defective equipment so first repair it if it's repairable and then do your calibration and coming back to the duration of calibration again you can do the periodicity as we had talked about in earlier slides guidelines from accreditation bodies we've said that also earlier have to be kept in mind while periodicities of calibration are concerned the dates shown in this particular example are only dummy examples and not really how it is you need to refer to the documents from accreditation bodies to decide upon the periodicity of calibration so again if you look at this you see the green ones are for the schedule maintenance or for major maintenance and the yellow for the calibrations done and calibrations due and such a matrix is a very handy mechanism of alerting and understanding the calibrations and one more set of documents that are required. So we talked about uh, different kinds of documentation, the product insert or the data sheets from calibrators for the calibration certificates, the calibration matrix. And one more set of documents that come out of calibration that is very important, especially in the case of analytical equipment is your raw data. If you remember, if the calibrations are done, generally it's a precision check before and after your calibration. Before calibration, so that to make sure to understand there are errors, random errors are corrected. So therefore, the precision check is done. And after calibration, for verification of your calibration, and running of your calibrator, all these things should be retained. There will be a lot of raw data generated during your calibration of your analytical equipment. There will be background checks, there will be carryover checks. So all these required relevant data should be filed and evidenced during any kind of audit. So this is a documentation part of calibration that you need to retain. Pre-calibration verifications, calibration process, Post-calibration verifications, the evidence of traceability and uncertainty, the actual calibration certificates and also a matrix to alert you about the need for upcoming calibrations. I just want to reiterate the documentation requirements, pre-calibration verifications and generally these are repeatability tests or QCs. Uh, CVs which will be taken, background checks, carryover checks, those will be done by your manufacturer in the case of analytical equipment. Right now I'm only talking about analytical equipment. So this is your pre-calibration verifications and during the calibration, how your calibrator was run, all those things will be available. Post-calibration verifications using QCs, the evidence for traceability and certainty, actual calibration certificates, and also a matrix to alert you about the need for upcoming calibrations. So that's about calibrations and I hope you have understood the concept of calibrations and concept of uncertainty, concept of traceability, periodicity, documentation. And these are all vital concepts and should be kept in mind as you embark upon calibration of your equipment. And the next part of this maintenance and use of equipment in your maintenance qualifications and this is also a very important aspect and we will discuss this in the next video.